like there's a van. Who's that? I think we've got the heating. Look at that! What do you have? Heating. Heavy? Ooh. Yeah. There you go. Hello, keep us warm. It's a box of paper. Oh, I only wanted the box of paper. Christmas has come early, peeps. Look at that. This is the uh, header tank, yes? Yeah, so that's yeah. the stuff that will have the glyco in. Blower. Blower. Or basto. Oh, that's oh, the... No, this is the control. Well, yeah, we'll see how uh, this works eventually. So we have Jubilee clips, inline filter, and a reducer in here. Oh, another box. Does it say what's on it? Uh, silencio. This is the uh, heat thingy matrix. Air matrix. We'll, we'll open it in a bit. Got some beefy pipes. Yep, yeah, so we've got 19 mil. Is there 16 mil in here? They're separate. Oh, no, they're not separate. Help. Yes, they Help. are. So that's the 19, and this is the 16. Really? That's 2 meters? Why do two, meet why do two meters always look so short <laughs> when they're. Well, you know? I'm nearly 2 meters tall. Yeah, that's probably the height of me. And you look taller. Technical support. Oh, need some of that. Warranty provider. Oh, okay, no. so this is all of our warranty and stuff. And there's lots of paperwork and paper clips in there. Lift! That must be the furnace. It says Eberspray on it. Eberspray. Yep, there. Ah. Eberspray HS3 D5E 12 volt CS. All right. So that's the thing that weighs a ton. Yeah. What is it? Installation kit. Uh, okay, open that in a sec. Okay, and... Heat exchanger. Oh. That's a heat exchanger? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's bigger than I thought. That's, that's quite big. The design might have to change. Let's pop, pop this box out, 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 away. Let's pop the box away. Just carefully opening it. Holy crackers! Yeah. Here's a reminder that one needs to do their electrics. Woohoo! Hey, electrics. Would you say this is the fuel fuel yeah, line? Yeah, that's the two mil fuel line. Fuel line. All right, I'll pop, pop that right here. Okay. What else have we got? Uh, this is exhaust pipe, I think. Yes. That feels weird. It should be like bendable. It is. It is. Yeah. This is the other end of the exhaust. This is the intake, I think. Yeah, and it's got its own air filter on it. Does it? That's an air filter at the beginning. Ah. What's that? This is the fuel stand. This is the thing that you dip. Ah, the you, fuel you, float you, thing. You dip this into... Uh, Your yeah. fuel tank. Yeah, the fuel tank. Then we have... A lot of pieces. More... Does it say what these are for? It's in German. Hold on. Um... How good is your German? Rusty. Uh, they're, they're wire fuse connections. More clamps thingies. So they're reducers, jubilee clamps, plastic pieces. Is it oh. in German still? Yeah. Vasa. It's something to do with the water. Yeah! Ver Verbeidung style. Ver Ver Bindung style Vasa. Do not take these out the baggie until you know what they are um, and you have labeled everything yourself as well. Because yes. obviously they're in this combination for a reason. So, uh, note to self do not open the baggies. Oh, look, more, more piping. That looks like. That looks like it should be attached to the. Um... Well, that's a full thing. Yeah. That might be the one that's supposed to go around the engine. Maybe. I'm not going to do the engine part. We'll though. see. Alright, so 
in here we have the furnace that we decided to go with we thought long and hard whether obviously to go diesel or lpg and then it was uh, should we go with the cheaper Chinese alternatives or should we go with a properly certified heater that uh, although expensive uh, does have a lot of technical support and because this is our first time touching this sort of uh, furnace uh, we decided that we would favor the technical support and to be able to track uh, you know people down to actually help us um, uh, instead of basically going with um, a furnace that after you buy it nobody wants to talk to you after that because I know a lot of you actually favor the cheap alternatives for, uh, for diesel heaters which might be the case eventually for us but for right now I am just interested in making it work so right here we have a diesel hydronic heater it is from ESPA it's the D5E uh, CS 12 volt blah 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 if you haven't caught our other videos or just don't know what a hydronic heater is it's essentially a burner that heats up liquid instead of just uh, uh, heating air. So a lot of camper vans have airtronic heaters, which basically has the burner and then a fan, and that and that and that and that fan then blows the hot air that's generated within the the furnace out into the living space. It's like a fancy hair dryer that runs on diesel, whilst this is a uh, fancy water heater that runs on diesel. But what's interesting about these hydronic heaters is that they can act as a on-demand water heater um, if you set it up to do so, which would be excellent for our recirculating shower idea, which is one of the big reasons why we went with uh, what, we've, what we've done. So, so we've been debating whether to go with a separate uh, diesel tank for the heating um, or to dip into the already existing diesel tank that we have, obviously the one we use for driving. Um, now, the issue is red diesel versus whatever diesel that you buy to actually run vehicles. The only difference between red diesel and the standard diesel that you pump into your vehicle to make it run is that, um, well, red diesel is called red and I think they're exactly the same except that the red diesel is not taxed because normal diesel has road tax on it. As such, red diesel is at least half the cost. So to run the, the heating in the vehicle on red diesel would be a lot cheaper than uh, actually dipping into our fuel tank which we'll have to fill with uh, the taxed diesel so that's the question to be or not to be to fuel or not to fuel <clears throat> righty then so we have laid out all of the main components even the ones that we don't have yet you know what looking at it like this it doesn't look too scary. I mean, we've got all the major components all laid out, all connected up as best we can, and everything kind of just flows off one another. The pipework essentially follows where the tape is. So that should be relatively easy. It doesn't look scary at all. Well, you know, that is if you ignore all the wiring that has to go with this, all the wiring looms, which we did translate from German, and they were about as helpful as you can imagine Google Translate to be. But we at least can tell what they connect to. So this here is the furnace. This is the brains of the operation. Everything connects to this central point, it seems. So to feed the furnace, we need the fuel and the air. So the air comes in through this black thing. This is the air intake. And I think this is some sort of filter, like an air filter that you have in your car on the end. And it connects a lot more securely than that with a Jubilee clip onto there, onto that one. The silver thing coming off and heading down all the way down there that is the exhaust so we want to point that the opposite direction of the air intake because we don't want them mixing so that goes all the way down there's a silencer like you have in the vehicle and that will poke out we'll probably poke it out the same way the exhaust in the vehicle is going so that goes out there and then this blue line that goes into the furnace here is the fuel line so the fuel line gets through its own fuel pump so we're not connecting it to the fuel pump already in the van we've got our own fuel pump our own fuel filter and then that filter leads into our fuel tank which will not be made of cardboard so with the fuel tank like we said we're not sure whether we're going with our own one or whether we're going to tap into the van's one but either way we've got an auxiliary line on our fuel tank already in the van if we do want to tap into that or we'll just install our own so that's everything to make the furnace run and then essentially we've got the inside cabin area so our glycol so the stuff that will be going around the entire system here will be stored in the tank and then when we turn the furnace on this pump will pump the 
glyco out of this tank into the furnace into this top one here that's the cold line it gets heated up in here and then it will come out and into first of all it will go into this heat exchanger so we've got an inlet and an outlet there for the glycol and then this inlet and outlet is for the water so basically they don't touch inside the heat exchanger but they come close enough so they transfer the heat to each other hence heat exchanger so after the glycol is passed through the heat exchanger, it then comes into our air matrix. The glycol comes in, runs through a heat exchanger. When you turn the fan on, it will blow hot air out. And then the outlet pipe for that, by now the glycol has probably cooled down a little bit. And then imagine this as a huge zigzag going throughout the floor of our van. This will basically be our underfloor heating. So we'll use the remaining heat in the glycol to just kind of radiate heat up in the floor so we don't have cold toes. And since we're having a futon and sleeping on the floor, we want a warm floor, hence the underfloor heating. So that will zigzag back and it will eventually make its way back into the header tank and the cycle repeats. And that's three methods of heating that we're using. Oh, and then we also have the controller. This controller is the controller that turns on the furnace. So the furnace there is going to be wired to this controller. And then basically this button here uh, has multiple functions which we'll go over them some other video and I believe uh, you can also see the temperature on this screen and you can set up some sort of timer for like seven day timer on this so that's controller number one and that turns on the the heat over there yeah. and then controller number two is to control this yeah so this is the air matrix and this air matrix is like a third party so it has really nothing to do with uh, um, the operation of the heater. When that turns on, this doesn't need to turn on. It needs its own wiring and its own messaging system to tell it what to do. So that's that's why we have this. So this knob controls the speed of the fan. So there's two fans here and then this I think it has like five speeds and then it has an automatic. Oop. There you go. When you set the temperature with this knob here, the sensor and the wiring uh, connected connect to this box will then uh, send a message to the air matrix to turn on or off and it will speed. And the only disadvantage to this is that you don't actually know what temperature you're putting it at. Yeah. So that could be 30, that could be 25. So we have to calibrate it eventually so we learn at what temperature is what. I'm probably going to have like markers on here eventually. I am very pleased with uh, the layout here. I don't know, I was quite similar to how I was when first looking at electrics. Like, you know, I know everything has to connect together. I know it's relatively simple, just this connects onto that, connects onto this. But for some reason this was a bit more, mm, I'm a bit more unsure than with electrics. But now, it's relatively okay. So everything is out, it's been taken out of the boxes, we've checked that everything that we ordered has been delivered and as far as we can tell it has. But really the next step before the heating is the wiring. So we actually do have to finalize the wiring completely, so actually install it. So we have all the components, we have the, all the cable bolt, we just need to connect it. Because um, uh, without that, no matter how much we connect this to, to the fuel tank, it will not work. The wiring is probably gonna come up within the next few weeks uh, because now it's crunch time, we want to keep the van warm. So I knew it was gonna win the, the, that's gonna motivate us, you know, get the heating working. Anyway, subscribe for all that's to come uh, and thanks for joining. Bye!